But I think we need to talk about this a little bit more and really kind of dissect it because there's a lot, there's potentially a lot of misnomers. Yeah. And again, I'm kind of one of those, like, I don't really know what it's about. And I don't know if I'm necessarily a believer yet because I haven't seen it with my eyes. So with that being said, can you kind of just talk about what Pilot Training Next is, what UPT 2.5 is? Yeah. And we can, we can dive in. Yeah. So first of all, you know, the big thing is, you know, people can smell snake oil a mile away. Right. And you know, the biggest thing that I can do is, is, and especially from the fighter community, uh, you know, being part, uh, and background from the fighter community, I try to number one, say, listen, like, I'm going to tell you the goods and the bads, and I'm going to tell you that I think doing nothing is the wrong answer. I've got a answer and it's may probably not the right one, but if we're on the path to getting that right answer, I think then that's where the the constructive discussion can go. I think when you get the people that are like, you know, the way I was taught is the best way and I don't want to hear about anything else, then I go, that's not really aligning with the uh, with the CSAP's, you know, accelerate change or lose mantra. And as being good fighter pilots and good stewards of of protecting our democracy, I think we need to always be challenging ourselves to do better. Right. The moment we ever come back from a mission go Dude, that's it. I, I I reached it and probably shouldn't be flying, right? And so I kind of take it from this. This is like a really challenging problem that we have in the Air Force, right? We have to solve. Um, you know, we have resource constraints. We have global engagement uh, stuff that we have to do, and and that's way above you know our pay grades, right? So, right. The pilot crisis is you know there's part of it which you and Paco had discussed as far as there's a retention issue, and then there's of course the pilot production. And so, you know, AETC, Education and Training Command, owns pilot training, right? And so pilot training is at least the production portion of this. But I look at, like, modernization, like, and having an Air Force where we are giving the best quality of instruction, the best hardware, the best tools and tech, I think that also helps in the long run with retention. That it, mean, it shows that we are investing in our future. We're investing in our current uh, cadre, our IP cadre, and you, you know, from your faith fate background just remember there's there's the grind but there's also that sense yep. of accomplishment when you are getting somebody that gets it the light goes on for the first time right all these things are really vitally important i believe strongly in them that's why i'm do what i do so to you know pilot training next was started i think the idea was kicked around in 2017 2018 they got serious about it and um it was one of several innovation uh debts that aetc had started and they put pilot training next, the initial cadre up at uh, Bergstrom Field up in Austin for a reason. They wanted it off of a military uh, base to just clean, clean, uh, clean slate design, right? I mean, think about pilot training in a completely different manner. Um, and that was great. There was a lot of, a lot of the, I would say, the bones of PTN that currently are going through and now starting to scale through um, UPT 2.5, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, that all started there. You know, those guys did awesome. Then that was part of, part of me showing up and part of a lot of the folks that are here at Debt Twenty Four doing that. And that was really exciting. Um, most of the tech that they were using was just commercially available. You know, gaming rigs, commercially available hardware. Just put it all together, see how it works, right? Uh, and the whole the thing was is an experiment, and. And I think that that's a lot of what gets lost a little bit on the Facebook sometimes is they hear what I'm doing under this roof, which I have a sandbox. Like I get to, I get to play with stuff, you know, and I get to try to break the the stuff and see how it works in a military training environment in these small group tryouts, these experiments. So like PTN version of one class was an experiment, right? And so what we get out of that, we look at what can scale, what what doesn't scale, what needs more work. And that helps inform scaling actions that the command's doing. I think the big thing that I try to highlight to people is like, don't get so hook, hooked or wrapped around the axle about what I'm doing currently in, in that 24 activities, which is wrapped into pilot train next. What we should be all be really excited about is that AETC is actively changing and modernizing. We're, we haven't modernized. Uh, we've modernized hardware several times. Right, you know, when we switched to T thirty seven to T six early two thousands, that was a, was a modernization, but it was only a hardware modernization. We kept the grade sheets the same, we kept the the academics the same. I mean, shoot, we're still doing computer based training, right? CBT means you go to a computer yeah. lab, you sit down at the computer lab, you do your little login, and you do that only there. We did that in the nineteen nineties because nobody had a personal computer, so you know. The fact that we're changing and modernizing is like, ah, yes, like I'm excited about that. And that's what I try to highlight to people that 
we're actively modernizing everything about UBT and we should be going, yes, this is the absolute what we need to do. How we do it matters absolutely in the details. So that's kind of like the impetus of two, uh, a PTN and really UPT 2.5 is what the, the folks in the fighter page and folks out there in the CAF and MAF, AFSOC, all that, they're going to see the product primarily of UPT 2.5 and through the pipeline versus what the few classes that I produced uh, with PTN. And so a couple, uh, there's a lot to digest and break down there. I think first to, is, a, is a point that we all like tend to gripe and, and moan about how the Air Force just doesn't change or do things. But this is like one example of where they're trying to actually do stuff and embrace technology and make change. So I think that's a, re that's a really good thing. And like you said, like we have modern technology. I said it with Paco's podcast, like being a FAPE, you know, back then you couldn't let a student go to a SIM or you couldn't go to an extra SIM with them if they're having trouble in their yeah. ILS or whatever it might be because that'd be a syllabus deviation. And that's like, that's dumb. Like, why wouldn't you go spend time in a simulator, which would be cheaper if it was available and then save a ride later on? So there's that. So I, I think it's good. Some things that pop out, right? Like obviously this thing initially popped out um, and then through the bro network, I think, because I know I've heard it of buddies who are teaching out at Holloman who have had some of the, the initial, I think it was the initial cadre P, or the initial class of yep. PTN that went through. There were some like really mm -hmm. weak swimmers, according to them, they like barely made it through, but then they still made it through, right? That doesn't give any credibility or warm fuzzy to the program, what's going on. Um, I think it is important yeah. what you said, like this, this takes time. So I do have a question like, what is the timeline from like, all right, we started this in 2017 is UPT 3.0 going to be the final one? And we'll do 3.1, 3.2, just some updates as it goes along. Like what, what is the plan there to get to a point where it's a viable product? Because also in that too, you know, I think there were several mishaps last year. They're all mm -hmm. young wingmen, whether correlated to the syllabi yeah. changes and things like that. I, I think that's to be said and who knows, right? But like, people are looking from the outside, looking in, and they're seeing all these things happen, which are necessar not necessarily positive things. And they, yeah. you know, jump to conclusions, rightfully or wrongfully, that, hey, we're making a lot of sacrifices and cuts on training just to get production yeah. numbers out. So, so yeah, so there's a lot of, lot of, lot of impact there uh, from that perspective. So let's start with the PTN version one, two, and three classes, because I think that's really important. So the original... Um, go do was remember they were all up there TDY <clears throat> to Austin, uh, you know, so that meant that, you know, per the joint travel rig, they got to do it in 179 days. And so, you know, that first class, all the instructors and the students were all held to that 179 day limitation. So that was, I think, a, a one driver of, you know, can we do this in half the time with the T6 using modern technology and methodology, right? And so what I mean by that is, Number quality quality instruction. So there was a, a focused instructor development plan for each of these versions that our instructors go through. So it wasn't pulling just line IPs. It was line IPs and then saying, "Hey, let's talk about adult learning uh, theory. Let's talk about student centered or learner centered training. Let's and, and really harness because we have a lot of preconceived things that we do. You know, the whole like, hey, I, you know, at least when I went through UPT and even through, and really until I was like a major. Like it was like, all right, I'm gonna think skinny and I'm not gonna ask a lot of questions in the brief. Maybe I'll do it in the pre-brief or the after uh, over at the bar, but I'm gonna kind of be quiet because if I if I ask a question that makes me look stupid, then uh, they're gonna dig and then guess what? I'm gonna hook the rider. I'm gonna have to do this again. It wasn't until like my second or third like, you know, spin up as a major, you know, as a IP, you know, been down range a couple times and you know, like, hey man, I think it was like. Uh, I was trying to remember one of the guys I was flying with Shaw and he's like, I don't know, maybe we should do this again. I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to apply ACM like one more time in the next six months. I, you know, let's, let's do this one again. Right. And so the learner centric yeah. is really trying to empower our students to like, if you don't understand the question, please, I'd much rather take this time and even step late, 10 minutes late to get that light bulb to come on versus wasting a whole lot of JPA and both of us being a little frustrated on the backside of that. And, and that, that requires us to talk not less, but there's more of the, hey, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. I'm going to tell you what you're probably going to mess up and we're going to go do this versus like, hey, how, how, I got to get in your brain. Even if I have 10, 15 minutes in the UPT environment, you know, in the fighter world, 
you get kind of spoiled with, you know, hour and a half brief, two plus hour debrief, right? You can, you've got the time. So how do we pull the perception, decision, execution, you know, errors and put that in a 10 minute, 15 minute format or 20 minute, whatever I have in UPT and use that. So, so from that perspective, there was a lot to lot of, of, of PTN that is not just hardware. Cause you know, I think all too often we get trapped into the, it's shiny things. We are a force of widgets. We love our widgets, right? And I, and the widgets are important. We've got to have them, but we really, really need to invest in our war fighters. Right. And so that for me is an investment paying forward is making sure our IPs, our instructors have, um, more tools and they, and we have focus on that. So PTN version one. Uh, was was 179 days, and then they did uh, send the fighter bound folks to Kelly for a couple of additional Viper rides, uh, and then they went to their FTUs. Um, and we did have a, a couple. We had one uh, cell phone. So one said, "Hey, I'm not ready for this to follow on," and then one did wash out. And those are the only washouts uh, for the entire program. And then you have a lot of uh, version two. Um, again, each time the methodologies changed and updated. So we learned from our mistakes, you know, um, failing fast. And then we did version two, uh, and then we did version three. Version three was the only version that had a, a modern cockpit. So we had the T6Bs that we borrowed from the Navy. Uh, and then we had them, especially a, a software kick from Textron. And so we had a uh, synthetic F-16 radar, a synthetic um, air to air, air to ground threat reaction capability, moving map display, et cetera. So, Really, we didn't get to try what was a truly envisioned in the early days of PTN until version three, which was, you know, 2020. So, um, and we can talk about that a little bit, but, you know, since version one, two and three, and then FOST stuff that we've done um, have all, I would say, you know, below average to above average. Um, and F-35s have done really well. Fourth gen fighters is pretty tough. They tend to do average to slightly below average. Um, and then our mobility and, um, in our special operations have been all, I would say, trending average ish, but, uh, we have some, some really, uh, stellar performers as well as, you know, some ones that have struggled through it, um, which I have to remind everybody we are, we're putting through, we take at least for the last few years, we take just the normal distribution of student capability. So you're going to have bottom, middle and top third, no matter what, what you fly. Right. 